I see no one there to remind me. There's one. Who is it? Is that us? Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> There's Debbie is the first contestant here. Hi, Debbie. Evening. We're going to get right into it. Here we go. We missed you guys. We've been doing lots of things on the homestead. I'm getting ready for this big conference coming up. The Homesteading Life Conference Spring Event. Man, is it going to be a humdinger? Oh, are you getting a glare? You yeah. look like you have a halo. Halo. Oh, I got her notification. You did? I did. That's excellent. That's what we like to see. We like to hear that YouTube is playing fair. I mean, you know, they don't give everybody the notification, but at least some people get some. We good? Yes, hello, everyone. There's Kentucky. California, Georgia, Michigan, Florida. And then we are going to bang Alabama. right into this bad boy, y'all. Here we Florida. go. All right, Homesteading Life Conference. In case you didn't know, Stacy and I are hosting a conference in Vandalia, Missouri this year. And it is going to be May 17th and 18th. We only have a couple hundred seats left. I mean, that's not a lot of seats if you think about the grand scheme of things, you know. And if you want to come and learn some really cool skills, how to grow food for yourself, how to take care of yourself without a dock, big pharma, how to dump all that stuff, how to, you know. How to protect yourself. How to protect yourself, how to grow food, how to have, you know, your chickens and your guineas and your ducks. We'll be talking about that. We'll talk about off-grid living. We'll be talking about solar. We're going to talk about. Dr. Jones will be there. He's a veterinarian, plus he does herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking about lots of exciting things, doing a lot of hands-on things like cheese making. We're going to talk about making what to render tallow. Or tallow, yes. And we're going to talk about just so many cool things. Butchering. We'll be butchering live on the scenes. <laughs> if you're too queasy for that, skip that class. <laughs> yeah, I know how to feed yourself, y'all. If you guys look back in history, people that knew how to grow food and basically take care of themselves can weather any storm. The ones that didn't were standing in the food line, all right? Sorry we were late this evening. Sometimes it's whew, just not enough time in the there day. There is, I mean, it just, time is really going quicker and quick. It goes by fast. We look very nice this evening, though. Can you guys see us? Is everything okay? How's the sound? Is the sound okay? Is everything good? We've got a little fan blowing on us because it's kind of getting kind of warm today. Yeah. So is that fan bothering you guys? And then we're going to get right into the story um on we won right so we got lawyers fighting for us and actually winning you gotta love that right and we'll talk about that here in a second we just want some more people to show up and we can get right into it so if you're just tuning in or you've never seen us before uh my wife and i live in this log cabin we grow 90 percent of our own food we poop in buckets we recycle that and actually use it for compost it's an ancient old technique um, you know, we live 100% off rainwater, and we teach people how to live self-sufficient lives uh, at our university, university.offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Also, we do it on YouTube for free. You guys, we have 1,500 videos walking you through how to set up this whole homestead closed-loop system so you can grow food and basically, you know, try to be left alone. <laughs> And we have a lot of great ways, too, that you can make money living on the homestead, how you can sell stuff and have businesses. So we this, this is a real how-to channel on that stuff. But lately, we've been focusing on all the things that have been going, going on, you know? And we'll say hello and thank you to our moderators. Yes, thank right you there. very much. Silly Rabbit says hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Tell me your name. Oh, what's he say? He's, uh, oh, man, I know I got your message. Hold on a second. What are you on about now? The rabbits. Do the rabbits. We don't do the rabbits because we eat according to Leviticus 11. If you guys want to do the rabbits, do the rabbits. They're good to have. Their poop is extra special good for the garden. Um, they're great too if you want to raw diet your dog. Last time we were here, uh, last Sunday night, we went over how to make raw food for your dog, your canine. Yeah, did anybody... Try it. Does yeah. anyone want to switch? Let's give some feedback. Yeah, let's see. Did everyone let me know? Let's get some feedback if last week you guys are starting your raw food diet. Move your water, please. It's bottom. Oh, yeah, look at it. You're blocking it. <laughs> wow, that's the Doug jug. 
as the Murphys would say. Hello, Mr. Murphys, and hope you're feeling better, Mr. Steve. Yeah, the kids now have dug jugs. <laughs> All right, nobody cares about their uh, fans, so you're good about that. Okay. Oh, some people might want to yes. see the fan. Ac actually, um, if you didn't know that the 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 Indians actually starved to death eating the rabbit. Right, because they're, they're a very lean meat. And in the wintertime, you need a lot of fat and stuff to help you with that body heat. Well, and here's the thing. Like, I know a lot of people are doing the carnivore diet or maybe a keto-type diet. A lot of people don't have luck with that, especially carnivore. They'll say, it doesn't work for me. I can't, you know, it's not working. A lot of times, they're not getting enough fat. Because when you do carnivore, you have to have, you need to have the fat. So if you're eating lean meats, it's not going to be as helpful. But... I'll have to say, before we were eating kosher, my dad, when I was growing up, we used to raise rabbits. I mean, we grew, we had thousands of rabbits probably in my growing up years, and he would, we would also, we would show them. We had little teacup rabbits with the little flat faces and the lop ears, the little lop bunnies, and uh, we were trying to get one down to fit in a teacup that had 12-inch ears. So we used to show rabbits and we used to eat them. And my dad would butcher them in our backyard. And we lived in a subdivision, which was crazy, but he had a whole thing set up and then we would butcher them. And my mom didn't want to have anything to do with it, but he would go ahead and he did everything with it. And, you know, he would cook them. He came up with all these wonderful recipes and it was good. Just make sure you eat a little fat with it, right? Yeah, you guys make sure you subscribe to our channel if you have already subscribed because YouTube likes to unsubscribe people at an alarming rate. And uh, just stay vigilant on top of the folks that you like to listen to because we're kind of being pushed around and also, you know, banned. I've also sent out some emails that people are reporting back. I've talked about this before that they're getting marked as like a spam or dangerous uh, from the Google overlords. So make sure you're checking your spam folder because uh, you could be missing emails that I sent out to you guys. So if you guys want to come to the conference, like I said, we only have a few tickets left. We're going to have a lot of great uh, subjects hands-on stuff you know from people that are doing it we're gonna have some some kid races and adult races we're gonna have uh it's got food at the event it does not include it with your ticket but there is food there i mean everything is just going to be very nice me and stacy and our yeah, team kid, are working very hard yeah the it. kids have a lot of activities with the kids like kid first aid yes like a kid first aid kid you know working with uh you know making like wool ornaments and with different things with rocks and crystals, um, doing just lots of fun things with the children. So we have lots of plans. I got a lot of stuff going on with them. So it should be super duper amazing. No, it'll be a really good time. We have over 250 kids already registered for the, to be there. Um, and we're just going to have a good time. It's a great family event. Um, and we are really going to try to dig in and answer all your questions and really get hands on with you guys on showing you the lifestyle, off-grid, homesteading, um, you know, kind of stand below the radar stuff, firearms, self-defense, the whole nine. Very park-like, friendly atmosphere um, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a great venue. Yeah. And it, uh, there's not a lot, there's not any hills or anything. No, so it's very flat. <laughs> you know, if you have uh, difficulties yeah. with the terrain, it's very flat, very easy going. And it is going to be, or it is actually, you know, this is our seventh year. I mean, we've been doing this thing. We were the only conference that kept on during covid because we did not believe the lot, uh, but yeah, and we just, <laughs> I gotta be careful. Yeah, be careful. I forget where I'm at over here. But we just, we were the only conference that went on about it, okay? We were the only ones you could go to. And we hugged necks and everyone came and not one single person cashed out over it. And then Kristen Burkett, she is having their first son on a meal. I love it. Yeah, Sandra, we're always trying to sell something. Sandra, that's right, because we have a conference that we want to teach people, and so we have to let you know that we actually have it, because he who has something to sell and only whispers in a well is not as apt, you know, to make the sale, to get you guys there. So i got to tell you over and over. We didn't talk about the books that Stacy's written or the tea that we make, the chocolate tea or the herbal tea or the tea strainer or any of that at offgridwithdougandstacy.com at the shop tab. But thanks for applying this opportunity for us to do so. <laughs> oh, gee whiz, I love it. All right. So we're going to get right into the news about the lawyers. Uh, we've got lawsuits going on. 
we're actually winning lawsuits. We want you to give you guys some good information. I mean, not some good information, but some positive information. So there's a little hope there, right? Because, I mean, gee whiz, are we getting smacked around a little bit lately and we're about tired of it? I think so. Well, let's get into it. Here we go. All right, make sure you guys are hitting that thumbs up, too. So the algorithm will send out the video to everyone. Well, that's totally free. <laughs> So you let I mean there's people who did the dog stuff. Let us know. How did you like it? How do they are they licking their chops? Do they really enjoy it? Well, some people ordered the book, Dr. Karen book, Karen Becker's book, the new one with the recipes. This comes out That's in good. June. Some people like look might have been Maddie. She swears by homemade dog food. Ocean's afraid is scared to give them fully raw. So then you know what, Ocean? Don't give them fully raw. If it's freaking you out, cook it. You can cook it. So, and just do it that way, let it cool, and then freeze it. But it's it, better than kibble because at least you're getting nutrition and you're not getting a bunch of dead food. Right. And consider this, you can not really till your raised garden beds, but, you know, you might want to work them up a little bit with a little scraper or something that can get in there and kind of, but not too bad. You don't want to rough it up, mess up the micros, you know, the microbiome. Unless you're putting in potatoes or something like that where you got to go a little deeper and make it a little loomy. But, yeah, you want to try to keep your beds uh, not compact. But you want to don't go want to disturb them too much. Same uh, premise applies if you're on the ground. Yeah, I love the little hand hose things. I love them. I have little hand hose for everything, so they really work well. I like the kind if you can get one that has a little fork thing on one side and then the flat blade on the other, so you can mix or match and do what you want, and it works out great. The one with the flat end, you can just kind of scratch off a lot of the weeds on the top if they're popping up. Or, or you can just kind of break it up a little bit, and they work amazing. What's up, Frostproof Florida? It's the God Smacks 12. All right, here we go. The judge rules against the state. Did you guys hear that? You remember the Amos Miller story? We try to keep you dated up on that. Amos Miller is a farmer who set up a co-op so he could sell food to his neighbors. And he sells food across state lines all around his area there, and they use the mail service and everything. Recently, the feds raided his place again. It's like the second time. Then they sent in the states and all that stuff. The uh, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, they grabbed all of his stuff. They bagged it. They tagged it. They dragged it away. They told him to beat it. They told him he couldn't even use his own milk or his own cheese or his own anything. I mean, it's disgusting, right? So this has played out through the court system. The judge heard the case. They actually kept an injunction on Amos Miller where he could not even do anything with his raw milk at all okay well the latest is uh, just dropped yesterday is that the state has lost the case against amos miller and amos miller has the right to sell raw dairy products over the state line so if you guys want to support amos miller you can try to look up his website and if you i don't know if they can have enough milk to produce for everyone who wants to support amos miller but it's just a good win for the homestead yeah. community that we have the ability and now a precedent, so to speak, of us being able to sell some of the stuff that we like to produce on the homestead across any state line, okay? As long as you have the other things in place. So make sure you follow your other state laws, rules, regulations, nooses, traps, you know, and so forth and so on. But up to right now, the Department of agriculture in Pennsylvania and the state of Pennsylvania has lost the case against Amos Miller and he is able to sell his milk raw milk across state lines I'm not too sure 100 about the rest of the food that he sells because he does sell beef and other items like this and different things, I yeah. think that everything is a go now okay so we're gonna keep an eye on that story I wanted to let you guys know about that and now we're just gonna talk about some stuff if you guys want to ask questions about uh, how we live our lifestyle what's going on or the conference, if you have any uh, questions about the conference, or the herbal teas, or anything and that we have going on, and there's or a lot just of whatever. Good stuff here. Yes. So, Hair Warrior says, is non-GMO microbial cheese safe? Okay, let me, let's talk about the cheese. So, a few couple, how long ago did we do that? Talking about what they're doing now with the rennet and the cheese. Right. Because before, Criminal. most all the rennet used was made from animal rennet. So nowadays, for everyone to be kosher, for vegan friendly and all that, everyone is switching now to a vegetarian or a microbial type rennet. Um, and what I found, I've been doing 
trying to look because you know it's like you get a favorite cheese that you like especially like goudas and cheddars and a lot of these cheeses mozzarellas all the havarti all of them you'll see and the only thing you can find when you read the labels are the microbial rennets or the vegetable rennet and um so it looks like probably now most all of them in the united states are going to either mostly be the vegetarian or the microbial rennet most of the European ones, you got to read and make sure, are going to be more of the animal rennet. So it's like harder with the cheese. So actually, we just, we're going to start making our cheese here. Big time. Make that like cheddar and all that. I got a little cheese press. Um, I mean, you guys, we, we actually believe this stuff. So we're going to start making our cheeses because, <coughs> you know what? A lot of times, it's been crazy. All these things that maybe if I would go and get like little treats or something and stuff at the store, because I, I told you guys a long time ago, I love to go to the grocery store. I just love to read labels. I just love it. It's just so much fun. I can go and spend hours in the grocery store. <laughs> You know, a lot of these things that I used to get that had great ingredients, now they're changing them and they're putting a lot of this stuff in in them. They've Wh been slowly is, changing your legacy brands. You know, you call them legacy brands, Coke, Pepsi, you know, all uh, your materials that you make your breads with or your pancakes with, all that stuff that you used to get. <laughs> They slowly are working in not all these chemicals and bio ingredients, right? And it's not good for you. No, it's not. So, you know, some of the stuff they'll say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. You don't know. I think I don't trust anybody these days. So <laughs> I know there are certain cheeses that are good, you know, like at, uh, they were talking, at, at, if you go to Costco, the Manchego, like it's from Spain. Um, you know, the... Parmesan, like the Kirkland brands, the Parmesan Romanos, you know, a lot of those are all good, those hard cheeses, a lot of your raw cheeses. So I'll tell you, I did go to Whole Foods and uh, they do have, and you can go at Whole Foods, and I think that we talked about it when we did it, but at Whole Foods, they have little bitty signs up with all their cheeses and it will say on there, what kind of rented is it? This is animal rented and it says all over and there's a man or a lady that's working there that will be very helpful to help you if you're not sure. And you can find out if that's something you want to do. But right now, I can't really, it's hard to trust a lot of different things right now. So the things just like anything else, if you're going to be eating a cheese twice a day and it's got maybe the microbial rennet and, you know, you don't know, are they feeding it with, you know, soy that's been GMO? You know, who knows? Who knows what they're doing to this stuff? Because these are like little chemical experiments that they're doing in labs and things. So we don't know. Unless you have a way to source it and to know, then it'll probably be fine. If you find a good source, let me know. Um, but from now on, I'm just going to strictly make sure I'm going to know that it's from Animal Rennet when I'm getting my cheeses. And, um, and that's it. Or I'm going to start making my own. Like at our conference, we're going to do mozzarella cheese. Easy mozzarella cheese anybody could do. So little things, and for a lot of you guys, making these really isn't that hard. So we need to get more in tune with our own foods because people are wondering, how come you don't get sick, but I'm getting sick? Well, maybe they're getting a lot more stuff from the store. Maybe they're getting a lot more stuff going out and eating at the restaurants. You know, we don't know, even if you're looking at the, you don't know how it's made. You don't know what brand it is. You don't know all that kind of stuff. So just we got to get closer to our food. Yeah. You guys got to get our t-shirt, get closer to your food. Yeah, we have a great t-shirt. <laughs> That's our to OG food. first, yeah. one of our first t-shirts we ever got. Too. Oh, is that us selling stuff again? That's Doug. He's a salesman. Dang it, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, we have some really nice t-shirts. <laughs> and the other one is, uh, you know, I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, the, we're talking about the Kim Trails. So those couple good uh, t-shirts you guys can get to represent your favorite. Off grid channel. Stop it already. Yeah, turn that off. I mean, get a life. I mean, if somebody doesn't answer the phone, right? Don't you just leave a message and move on? I mean, it's like stalker material here. Oh, the, hi, Re, uh, Heidi's here. Heidi, Heidi. Of course, she's a moderator. Hi, Heidi. Thanks, Heidi. 
We love Heidi. If you guys don't know who Heidi from Rain Country is, go check her channel out, Rain Country. <laughs> Oh, and Michael's going to be at the conference. Oh, so Patty just got sheep cheese from Whole Foods, Manchego and blueberry cheese. So, so good. Good, good, good. There's Molly out there protecting the farm. Oh, Molly. Molly's Molly gonna, caught a mole. She, yeah, well, no, it was a mole. Mole? Oh, yeah. yeah. She caught a mole today. She sees it, she pounces on it, and she goes and she goes, and then she I did gets silence it. it. Did you? Yeah. I guess you didn't, because it's making noise still. I mean, come on, though, right? Gee whiz, y'all. Man, look at that. We got some low numbers tonight. Everybody's outside enjoying the hot weather. We had nice weather roll through the Midwest. We haven't had many chemtrails the last couple of days. All right, let's see what we got here. Don't forget those T-shirts. You guys can represent with those. We got some pretty good ones. The one that I really liked that I came up with during the vid those years ago, was your guilt has no power over me. That is a really good one. Your guilt has no power over me. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you got to keep checking your if you're subscribed or unsubscribed. If you guys just showed up, we just talked about the Amos Miller case. Amos Miller has actually been, uh, they won against the state. The Department of Agriculture in Pennsylvania has been ordered to stand down and that Amos Miller is allowed to sell raw milk over the state line and in Pennsylvania. Okay, so that's the latest news on there. And I'm double checking to make sure about him being able to sell his meat products because he does supply a lot of people with meat that has not been molested. And he should be able to. We should be able to buy food that hasn't been injected or mess stuff. with or put chemicals in her. And, and they it. should label it at the store so we know. But that's why they won't do it because then we won't buy it. Then they can't dump their buddy's chemicals into our food. Don't you guys get it? I was just talking to Stace like, you know, every year about this time all across America, all the farmers are riding around dumping anhydrous ammonia into the <laughs> earth. Okay? Every, I mean, it's Go look up where anhydrous ammonia came from and why they're using it because i did that's your homework go look that up all right and that's happening right now in all the farm fields across america and it's disgusting and they should just think about it for one second like you know you yeah, that's the gas they use to make meth <laughs> it's highly disgusting like it has warnings and labels and everything all it's hazmat material and they're pumping that into the earth. It's, it's ridiculous. And then they're growing our food in it. And then they're yeah. telling you, right, that you're driving your car is actually the problem. I mean, it's all just so ridiculous. So William wants to know, what do you think about or do with mullen? Um, mullen is an amazing herb. Wonderful, actually. Here. Can I get it out? See, I have some right here. So mullen is just a wonderful plant for your respiratory system. And actually, I just gave a nice jar of this to one of the Amish ladies who has gotten this respiratory thing and she can't kick it. And so I gave her a little manuka honey and a little mullen. And so she's going to try sipping on that for a little bit to possibly help with her respiratory issues she's having. Because she had that thing going around that a lot of people are getting. And, oh, Maddie said she loved the university last week. Oh, we had a lit one last week at the university dot off good with Doug and Stacy dot com. Uh, we talked about firearms and protecting yourself a little bit. We didn't really get into the, like, I was laughing with Jesse a little bit. We were so fired up and talking and having a good time with you guys. We forgot to talk about, like, the best uses for everything. So we're going to have a follow-up class on that. And we're going to talk about what you should consider maybe around the house. Or, you know, if you're sitting in your recliner, you don't want to break out the, you know, 223 or 556 five, rounds. You might want to use something a little more subtle. So we're going to have another class follow-up with that uh, in just a little bit. Oh, Darlene, she made the zucchini lasagna. That's funny, Darlene, that you were talking about that because I 
was just thinking about where I'm putting the zucchini in my garden because that's my favorite thing to make. I love zucchini lasagna. So if you guys want a gluten-free, you know, if you don't want to use the noodles, you slice the zucchini in slices and use that for your noodles. And then you put everything else, your ricotta or your cottage cheese and all that yumminess and your red sauces and um, go ahead and cook that in the oven and it's amazing. Oh, so Barbara says that she's doing the dog food, but she's cooking it on low heat. Yeah, you can do it. It all, it all works great. You guys, please stay up on your preps. You could literally wake up the next morning and Iran could be firing missiles at Israel. Okay? Now, I know that sounds very dramatic, but then I found out that the, those drones and the, what they're firing and using against Israel, they fire from, it takes two hours for this stuff to get there. So they, they're kind of, they beef it up a little bit, but just be careful and make sure you have your preps on like Donkey Kong. Please understand World War One reset, World War Two reset, Vietnam got rid of the gold standard resets. Every time they have these things, it's because they want to usher in the reset. What have we been talking about for the last several years? You will own nothing and be happy, Right. You're going to have digital currency, digital passports. You're going to be on a social scoring system, all right? You're going to live in 15-minute cities. I mean, the, this stuff is for real. They have spent billions of dollars on it. They're not joking around. It's, you're not going to click your heels and it's going to go away. There, at some point, there's going to be a friction point. You know what I'm telling you? So all I try to do is keep us ahead of it a little bit so we can fight it up front like with Amos Miller. And you guys can be aware of it so you can get your salt from Redmond and your bentonite clay and save money doing it. Make sure you pick up a sun oven or, you know, stuff like that for your preps. And just so you're ready, just in case. So you're not standing in a food line or flipping out when it happens. That's all. It's Uncle Doug looking out for you. Okay, Chris, your the kitty has a, a puncture. Just remember with a puncture wound, you need to let it breathe. So if you're putting, like, any... Don't, the clay, I would keep it off of there. You need, it needs to be able to breathe a little bit. Just make sure you keep it clean. And usually puncture wounds will get better. And cats are very good at cleaning their stuff. So if you have maybe some, you could even put honey, you know, a little bentonite or not honey, manuka honey on it even. Um, or actually, uh, if you want to put a little, because this cats are okay with this, is um, coconut oil too. Rockefeller, the rumor on the street is one of the reasons why they burned up Maui and some other places is because they're getting ready to usher in these 15-minute cities. These are cities where you're not going to own a car. There's going to be no transportation. Everyone's going to be on foot or bicycle. And everything you're going to need is going to be built up, right? So maybe that's one reason. <clears throat> Let's put on our thinking caps for a second. Why they're gutting all of the downtowns everywhere. Like if you think about all the downtowns and the crime levels that have gone up over the last maybe 10 or 15 years, hardcore 20 years, hardcore, right? Like St. Louis is disgusting downtown. Uh, you know, you think about all that and you think about all the empty space and then you think about how they got rid of the office building a couple years ago. So now you have even more empty space. And what could they do with that space? Turn them into condos, put people in them and make everything super convenient. And they 5G your brains out, and then you buy everything right below your feet, and you go nowhere. That's what they like. Look them up. 15-minute cities. It's already in play in several places, you guys. They already tried it over in the UK, Europe, and stuff. They were tearing down the barriers. <laughs> they said, no, thank you. This is legit news stuff. This is not any kind of fake news or you know anything. Go look it up. Lots of people are doing the dog food, so I like, that's awesome. And then Caitlin says, any tips for planting watermelons and squash? So I'm going to tell you, Caitlin, that's funny that you say that. Because we switched over for, to, like, all raised beds now. You know, I used to have areas where we would, I would do things, maybe some of my squashes and things, and then raised beds. Now I have all raised beds. So I wanted a good place for my watermelons. So over the past few years, we had a big mulch pile. Because they like hills. If you have a mound of mulch or maybe you have compost or something that you're letting break down, that would be an amazing place to stick your watermelon or your squash. I made you a special mound. He made me a great one out of a whole bunch of old wood chips that we had. However, Super dark dirt. over the past, well, 
last year was a bad year because now it's pretty low and there's some grass and weeds and stuff growing up in it and it's kind of a pain so i i don't do that because oh now here i'm talking Come about on what you now. did i made you a nice I special thought, one here so now i said he scraped out Just the other day well i thought you were talking about the front <laughs> no that was before so um what he did was is he cleaned out the sheep area over on this side and it's beautiful soil and he made a big mound over by your human or compost area and I'm like, I have a spot in my raised bed area garden. So I told him to make me a, just a mound. So if you just get a big mound, if someone comes and just dumps a big mound there, you can go ahead and put your, you know, I, I always like to plant like three seeds. Um, and, and I do like a boom, boom, boom. So this is usually how I plant it. So if I have a little mound, I'll do three seeds, three seeds, seed, three seeds, and then I'll have lots of stuff growing from that. So this year we're going to have watermelon <laughs> we're making signs a watermelon world um so and then we're gonna have a cucumber castle so i have a cattle panel or we're gonna do a whole bunch of cucumbers on one and then we're gonna have a watermelon world so squash really do unless it's like a zucchini that's more like in a or like a lemon or like any kind of squash that stays pretty local you know like a regular green zucchini or yellow zucchini so the vining ones just make sure they they love mounds so if you can get a mound they will do great. I found the best way that my squashes and things do good in a raised bed is when you do have like a bridge or something for them to go over. So I like to connect one cattle panel from one raised bed over to the other raised bed so you can get it and just curve it. And then that way you'll put it at the bottom and then that way you can go up and over because they do like to crawl. They like to have their space. They're just going to go everywhere. They're like tentacles. You guys got to smash that thumbs up so we can get the thing out to everybody. Some people are just like, oh, my gosh, they're live. Who just said that? Oh, where is it? So that only way they get that is because you guys keep smashing the thumbs up. So smash it. And, yes, that's just water in my jug. Well, look, see, Nicole, Nikki Hole says, oh, my gosh, I'm live. How, surprise, surprise. Hi, Doug and Stacy. Because she got the notification because you guys are smashing that thumbs up. So help me out with the thumbs up. Yeah, everyone liked the Wednesday class. Where do you get that cattle pan? Uh, if you get one cattle panels to make cattle panel trellises or have fencing, I, we keep about 10 panels on standby around here. And you can get them at the farm and home store. Uh, we don't go to Tractor Supply. If you want to go to Tractor Supply, that's fine. But we're not down with... Uh, people that do ESG scores, you can look that up, ESG scores. We're not down with people who support Drag Queen Story Time. that I broke that story in the Homestead community. Took a lot of heat about it, by the way. Even was called a liar, which I was not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, we don't shop at Tractor Supply. You guys do you. Uh, you know, we're pretty serious about the stuff and the information that we present to you guys. We do not take it lightly, and we're convicted individuals. So we don't stop there, but you guys can if you want to. And yes, everyone, if you're coming to the conference, we will have lots of hats like this at the conference. Oh, yes. If you guys want to get a Doug jug. No, we don't have Doug jug, but you can get a hat. Uh, we'll have some Amish bakery stuff there. Um, you know, we're just going to be lit. The conference is going to be a really good time. We only have, it's limited seating, and we only have a couple hundred tickets. That's why I say it sounds like a lot, but it's not. Because once people start understanding it, you know what I mean? They get it, and there's a lot of you guys and only a couple hundred tickets. That's not a lot, okay? And we have over 250 kids already signed up that are going to be hanging out with us, so it's very family-friendly. We're going to be doing everything homesteading and off-grid. We have awesome seasoned presenters. Dr. Leo is going to be at the homestead tomorrow. Yes, he's coming here tomorrow. So we're going to do a video tomorrow. We're going to crack open the bees. I'm scared you guys are going to watch the homestead videos no more. <laughs> so I got a homestead videos coming up. We're going to get into the garden, show you guys the bees. Dr. Leo will be here tomorrow. We're going to crack them open. The only conference Dr. Leo is speaking at this year is at the Homesteading Live Conference. So if you guys value the information that Dr. Leo shares about natural beekeeping, you should come to the conference and you should definitely watch the next video that I have coming up as we crack open the beehive outside. Okay? See how it did over the winter time. We'll have books. Stacy will have all of her books at the conference. Dr. Leo will have books. Everyone will have their wares there for sale. We have the 
the shooting trailer open so you guys can go in there and do simulations on defending your home and stuff. Oh, Jesse. it is so much fun, you guys. Mm -hmm. I had to, I did it the other day. It is so cool. Master Sergeant Jesse set that up, and uh, it's going to be really a good time. He's got programs set up for you guys. He's really looking forward to sharing his information with you guys, uh, good friends of ours. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of information and a lot of learning. And if you're even if you're old at this stuff, you're going to learn something. But if you're new at this stuff, your head's going to explode. And if you're kind of in the medium area, you might learn a lot of new tips and new tricks. And hit that thumbs up because it seems like there's only 2,900 of them. And there's 4,500 people watching right now. How long will the animal rent it last or stay shelf stable? If you keep it in the refrigerator, I think it might help. You know what? I don't know. I would, you know what, if you could go, if you have a brand, just look it up or it might be on it. I can't remember the one I have here. Let me find it. Uh, if I can find it. Where is it? Keep talking while I'm looking it up. Dr. Leo. Dr. Leo, he's our uh, Russian beekeeper. And if you go back to our, uh, here, I'll put up the playlist. One thing uh, Stacy and I strive for is a closed loop system. So uh, definitely we want pollinators visiting our homestead. And on top of that, we want to have, uh, you know, honey for a sweetener. So we've been keeping bees. Man, I've been doing the bees since like the first year we got out here. And you can actually go to our channel and watch our my natural progression from learning Amish style beekeeping. I don't say Amish style, but that's the way they all keep bees. And I was doing the way that I was mentored because I've lived with the Amish, you know, hand to hand for seven years. And we've been here 15 years living just like them. And uh, I learned how to keep bees from them, right? Which turned out to be not the natural beekeeping way. And then when I met Dr. Leo, all of his stuff made such good sense. I did my homework. And we teamed up, did a really great bunch of videos for you guys, totally for free. And you can watch them and learn a lot about keeping bees naturally. You should never buy a swarm or buy bees from someone, a nook of bees. You should always catch a swarm. It's, and it's just really, really easy stuff. to do. Most people think, oh, no, it's, it's, it, I, I mean, myself, let's say if I was just a girl that just thought, oh, I like bees, but it'll be too hard for me to do. It's really not hard to catch a swarm. Yeah. So. And we're going to set a swarm box tomorrow. So, guys, make sure you watch that video. I dropped the playlist in the comments section. If you guys want to open that window up and pause it, you can go through the whole thing. The whole playlist is so much information, man. It's like, and I filmed it really good, like National Geographic stuff. Well, I did the best that I could. But you really could learn a lot of information. We really deep dive we, from setting up the hives, catching the swarm, all the way to collecting the honey. So, it's really just a bunch of really good videos. So, if you guys want a really great animal rennet, and I'll thank Jesse for this one. It's called, it's wall cor Oh, I don't know if you can see it. That's really bad. Yeah, wall corin. There it is. It's animal rennet. Animal rennet. And it says right there. <sighs> Dissolve and oh, 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 tablets of nature. It doesn't say how long. Here, wait, I'll, uh, maybe I'll find out. We don't have any connections with those folks. We just want you guys to get the best products possible. So we share with you what we find uh, that works good for us. And sometimes we curve off of them if we find out some hokey pokey's going on, okay? Like Bragg's apple cider vinegar. So we here, don't tell like, you guys to get that this anymore. Is, yeah, this is, it contains 97% chymosin, and that's what you need, okay? 3% pepsin, which are enzymes, and salt. Organic and GMO free. That is it. There's a lot of animal runnets, and that's the other thing too. They may put some preservatives and other things in it. So this one is really, really a clean runnet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. My rented is not nearby, so I can't get it and look on it. I'm sure it says something on it. Andres, you'll be flying into Lambert, St. Louis. Lambert, St. Louis, if you want to come to the conference. Okay. So, 
Find the live chat again. Rennet is used for making cheese. And we've uh, discovered that the cheese that you're buying at the store is made with vegetable and lab-grown rennet, which is all garbage, and they feed the other Well, rennet vegetable rennet is soy. usually not very, it doesn't taste very good. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of skanky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Rennet has a limited shelf life. Seven to eight months set when it's refrigerated. Five years when stored in a freezer. Two years at room temp. Catherine, you are on it. Thank you. Two years at room temp is plenty good, don't you think, man? Just I mean, you guys are going to use it. Yes, yes. So we gave you guys some good rennet to pick up if you want to try to get some of that. I would really stay stocked up on my preps, uh, however this goes. I see some people poking fun at the eclipse. I did a video about the eclipse, possible earthquakes. The next morning, we had a 6 point or 4.8 or whatever it was in New York, New Jersey. Several other ones went off, right? And I, I'm not, I was kind of, you know, I'm not saying nothing did or didn't happen, right? Just because you can't see it right in your face at the exact moment. But now we have Iran firing missiles at Israel, you know, like... All this stuff is going on, okay? So there's enough to get your get your head on a swivel about. I promise you that. <laughs> and I was just presenting you guys the information that I found interesting. I wasn't like some prophecy dude prophesying that what was going to happen. I was trying to let you guys know what's up. And I did have someone send us a, a message and left it on that video. If you go look for your own self. Yeah, she said that there was a brown haze in the area where they were watching the eclipse with a crowd of people. And several people were rushed to the emergency room with burning eyes and throats. And she said she would get back to us. And I posted that um, as well. So all I can do is provide you guys with the information. Oh, Joe, people are wanting to know about that homeschool thing. <clears throat> all right. You know, I haven't got into this a little bit. I've looked into it a little bit. But here's the bottom line. Bottom line is... Y'all are going to have to start standing up for your rights. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to squeak them away from you. Missouri is trying to see they have to pass the laws before they know what's in them. That's Nancy Pelosi has primed your brain into accepting that. So that's the Doppelinger or the, the, what do they call it? No, the, uh, not a Doppelinger. Not, not that's a perfect Right, right, right. It's called a Maddox, Maddox, whatever. But she put that in the head, so now people think, yeah, you don't even got to read the bills. So if somebody's trying to sneak in in Missouri that you have to... They're going to reclassify homeschools as schools. So if you have a homeschool, now it is a school. And if you have a loaded firearm in said school, that's going to be a felon. Ha! Okay. But that's also anti-Missouri gun laws. So I haven't made a big deal out of it because I just think it's a little bit of fodder. Uh, because they can't really pass that. And I saw... Uh, our buddy Zach at American Homestead already posted that they were trying to amend it so it got taken out right away, right? Because they can't put us in the trick bag like that over our firearms. Yeah. It's our Second Amendment right. Right. So that's the only reason why I really haven't talked that much about it. I was kind of waiting for it to play out a little bit. I'm just trying to let things, you know, I want to be kind of certain about what's going on when I present it. And some things got to be a little out there because, you know. Oh, tea is on the run at two. So yes. eight months when refrigerated and tablets last up to five years when stored in the freezer, two years at room temp. They're not really going after homeschools. It's just people are going to slip stuff into this legislation because freaking people are lazy. They're breaking the contracts they have with us, the citizens. Okay, we can't stand for it anymore. We have to start holding them accountable, and that's why we're going to feel the pain because we're not. There's no accountability. Right? We're going to feel the repercussions of having no accountability. So hopefully we'll see you guys at the Homesteading Life Conference coming up in May. We are 30 days away from the May conference. Holy cow. Can you believe that? A little bit more. 30 days away. A little over a month. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are asking about what's wrong with Bragg sample cider vinegar. Okay. So a they is, sold out. They sold out. To Kay Perry. Well, and other people. Right. Other people. Like an investment thing, but Kay Perry has it with her little rich friends. Who cares who owns it? But I'm just saying. Well, because it's kind of now turned to that side, to the liberal well, side. Well, so the thing is, is some people were saying it could be watered down. Maybe it's that's not. That's what happened I don't first. Know. But then now, this is the one that's the kicker, you know, is they're using the Bill Gates appeal apples. We told you about that, guys, a long so, time ago. So that's just a, like. 
you know, I'll never be getting that. We told you guys we broke that story. I got to go back through my library. Uh, first, they were watering it down. And we were like, what is going on with that? And now we found out, we said earlier they were doing the appeal. They came out with all the stuff. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. And now, yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> a lot of things are, no, they're not. No, they're not. And then they come out. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Right? Stay vigilant out there. Let me see if I can find that video when I told you guys about that. That was a while ago. Misspelled on purpose. Do you have to use raw milk to make cheese? No, you don't. You can use raw milk or pasteurized milk. Uh, however, raw milk, you're going to get a lot more beneficial enzymes. It'll be a little healthier for you. But um, if you're making cheese like the uh, traditional way and you're going to let it ferment and it's going to go, you know, a month or two, like cheddar, you know, you want it says three months for, or it's aged for three months or six months or a year. Um, you know, it just depends. You know, sometimes we got to do the, what, do it with what we have. Mm -hmm. So. Y'all, it is easy to make your own apple cider vinegar at home. We're going to do a whole thing on making vinegars and all that kind of stuff at the conference. Yes, and in the uh, university. Oh, yes, the university. This is the, uh, the class on Wednesday is all about vinegars, how to make vinegar. It is? Yeah. Did we talk about that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We forgot. Yeah. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday is all about making vinegar. So if you haven't it's signed up for the university, on. you oh, want to know. You better give me a list. People got to have a list on what they need to get. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Because I got to send that out Monday so everyone's prepared for the class on Wednesday. Our classes are hands on and live and lit. We do it all right there on the spot, answer your questions, put it up, and then revisit it to bottle it, put it away, and all that stuff. University.offgoodwithdougandstacy.com. Basically, the price covers all of our hosting for the website. We can talk what we want to talk over there. Uh, anything we want to talk about, we are not monitored. Uh, so we that that was our solution to all this, um, you know, policing that's going on with our speech, and that they tell you that they are doing it. Like it's common knowledge that the White House was communicating with the social media platforms, telling them to shut up about spreading the lies about the last round of the you know what, right? And then they did that, and people got bad information. And it's not working out well. Please show the remnant container again. Just hit the rewind later on. That's all. Why? How do you get rid of the ants? Fire ants. That's a good one. I tried to diatomaceous earth first, uh, but fire ants are a tough one. Depends on where you. A lot going. of you guys who live in areas that have fire ants, because we don't have our, we don't have them here. So I know a lot of people more down south. Um, have them so put some remedies that some of you guys have been doing non-toxic remedies that really do work for you so put them on the comments and our university is 7 30 p.m every wednesday night central standard time and if you don't make it on the night we have it you can watch the replay anytime anywhere just like the youtube platform except we don't hide notifications from you if you sign up to get notifications or whatever we send out emails about the live shows and plus we'll be feeding it with really good informative videos during this year as we're going throughout this the season here okay and let's all give patty a virtual high five patty because she's doing soleil and she's doing a rebounder five days a week she's she roundy feel? she's 66 in two weeks and she's getting herself together it's you know what i cannot tell you the amount of people that i know that are in their 50s 60s and 70s and i know a couple in their 80s or their early 80s <laughs> who are really trying to take one, charge that are taking charge of their health yes. and trying to really get and they're getting in better shape than they've ever been and they're dumping up, some of those pills they're getting rid of a lot of their aches and pains by doing some of these simple things no how's the one guy in your class Oh, I have a hundred-year-old man. Hundred-year-old guy. That's been taking my kids. He's doing really good, he's actually. Really yeah, good. yeah, he's doing great. A good brand of rebounder, Stacy likes. Bellacon. Bellacon. B E L. B L L I C O N. I'm trying to read. I can't do two. But the older I get, I can't do two things at one time anymore. <laughs> I have to concentrate yeah, on one thing at a time. The Balacon's been pretty good. I use it as well. 
Uh, they have a couple different strengths and sizes and whatnot. You have to kind of get your bands accordingly. But for so general people, I, I would get the like medium size. And you know they have a whole thing. You can get a whole thing on too to help hold you up. It helps keep your balance because if you really haven't been doing much, it takes balance to get on one of those things. You got to step on it. It's a little unstable, so it's going to work on your core strength. It's going to work on everything. It helps your pelvic floor. I mean, I cannot tell enough. If you really can only get one thing. You know, working on your breathing is very important, but also when you have, and there's a, so many people I know that don't like to exercise, okay? And I'm not talking about, you know, my whole life, my whole life I did exercise and work out, and that's what I did for a living. But, you know, the more over the years and the more that I'm learning, you know, if you just do like more primal, natural type movements, like gardening, <laughs> you know, you're going out, you're carrying your buckets, you're you know, doing things, just kind of moving. But those are all wonderful things to do. But the rebounder is going to really work on that lymphatic system, which is basically sort of like the sewage dump because we have a lot of stuff that we're breathing in, that we're eating, you know, we're laying on couches that are made out of weird materials, you know, all this kind of stuff. Our home is the most toxic place, not being outside. Really, it's inside the home. So we need a way to work that lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system, so you know, you have, they're here, they're here, they're here, your belly, your groin, behind your knees are like some major dumping areas. So you can do, and I talk, we've done videos on it weeks and weeks ago, but I love doing the big six. It's lymphatic massage. I do it every single day in the morning. You know, I'll do it sometime. If I forget it, I'll do it in the afternoon. If I forget again, I'll do it later on in the day, maybe before dinner. But I try to do it because by doing that big six, do we have, that was on one of the, um, I've done it on a couple of live shows, I guess. It's a great way to really help to clean out that lymphatic system because it does need a pump. So if you're not moving daily or getting much movement. Because you guys have to understand we are hunters and gatherers. But right now we're television watchers and sitter arounders. So you need that to get it to move. So you're clogging up all your, your highways and byways inside of here, okay? And then you get sickly, and then instead of doing this, they want you to take the pill, and then that creates side effects. Then you got more, and then more, and more, and more, and more. Pretty soon you're walking around with one of these pop-top containers every day of the week trying to remember to take all your... So, I mean, do you really want to live this? No. So that's I why I'm not, I like no, thank you. the rebounder. The rebounder is just a little mini trampoline, but you need to get a better one, like these cheaper ones that you're going to spend 50 or $60 for aren't the best. And I know a lot of people are like, I can't afford, you know, you know, a few hundred dollars. But sometimes you can find them on sale if you go, you know, on what is it, Facebook Marketplace, or sometimes you'll find them at a Goodwill, or you know, you never know. So the rebounder is great because you can be in your pajamas, you can you're, you're barefooted, you can just go wherever, no one's gonna see you. You can watch TV if you want to, and you're just bouncing on it. Because that bouncing is great for your entire body. It's going to help with your eyesight. It's going to help with your balance. It's going to help with your weight. It's going to help with your muscle tone. It's going to help with your pelvic floor strengthening and your bladder control. It's going to help with digestion. It'll help you poop better. It's going to help with lots of different things. Go online and check on the benefits of rebounding and you'll be like, wow, it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. And so that is my, I love it. It's my go-to. And here's the thing. Let's say you have foggy head. You know, you woke up in the morning and you're like, oh, or maybe you just can't think clearly or fog. If you get on that thing, you bounce a little bit. And then when you get off, you're like, whoa, you know, I can really think better. I can focus. And it's wonderful. It's great for children. It's good for any age. Any age is good with it. So um, I just really do like the rebounder. And then if you want to know a little bit more about the lymphatic system, you can go on Instagram and follow um, Dr. Perry Nicholson. Hit Stop Chasing Pain. And he does tons of tutorials on the big six and lots of different techniques to help things that you might have going on. And he's just a wonderful resource. So you can check him out too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, y'all try not to have, you know, like a poor mindset, you know, mindset. You know what I mean? Like, Sure, some things are pricey, right? 
But that stuff helps keep you healthy. So you pay it for one way or the other. Like you're going to, if you pay more for food and you try to get the better food and you try to live a healthier lifestyle, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but then you're not going to be lethargic and and sick and going to the doctor. And you know what I mean? Like you're going to feel better. But you know, you got to pick and choose and get your, if you can't get a Bellicon, get something that's closer. Just get something you can't afford. But don't type that down. I can't afford Bellicon, Bellicon too pricey. Because that's pounding this thought process into your mind and it's keeping you in this poor mentality. When I find things, I mean, we've lived out here on one little salary, I'm telling you guys, like cheap as hell. Okay, don't look at us now, big Utah, YouTube people and all this. We have our videos, you can go watch them. All right, from one little cabin to, you know, barn over there I built, to the outdoor kitchen, to all this infrastructure, and to everything you see now 15 years later. But we live super duper cheap and we never had a, a, a poor man mentality like that. If I knew something was going to be beneficial, it wouldn't be, oh, I can't do that. It was, how can I do it? How can I hustle it up? How can I get a little bit saved to get it? How can I attack it? So that, that's how you got to think with your mindset. If the SHTF actually happens, your mindset is going to be a lot, a lot, okay, on if you make it or not, period. But on the on the rebounders, you can also check, you know, good quality rebounders yes. for $200. Or, you know what I mean? You could go, go and look at that also. But also find, I know the last, time I was reading someone had gotten a Bellicon for eighty dollars. So you don't know. You never know. Can I do rebounding with a replacement hit? Yeah, you actually probably should. Just make sure go make sure that, that your physical therapist and yeah. the doctor and everything says that you're ready to go and you're ready to move and if on. If they and say no stuff. jumping, that's probably like onto a concrete surface like no jumping with but the rebounder gives like you're gonna <clears> kind of suck into But it, you need so. to first Ask first to see where you are in your therapy. Yes. So just do that. Always. And then they'll tell you yay or nay. That's right. Don't forget the most capable hand. That's at the end of your wrist. That's right. Is at the end of your wrist. And that's why you have to hit that thumbs up. Thank you. 3,800 people hit that thumbs up. 4,700 people in the house tonight. And we're about to wrap it up. It's going to be a short night tonight. Can we buy Comfrey and Jerusalem artichokes roots from you? No. <laughs> I, I, you know, my comfrey, I, I use it for my livestock and just and use it for us. So and y'all look up us. the Craigslist and hit the Facebook marketplace. You know how many people buy stuff like that and then sell it for 10 bucks comfrey. or 20 yeah, bucks? Yeah, you guys can find comfrey. No, I'm talking about too. rebounders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people who get them and never use them again. When I first got out here, that's what I was doing. I was finding 1800 style. I got videos of me use an 1800 style, style plow. That I bought, actually, I found on Craigslist, drove all the way down there, picked it up, brought it up here, used it, used it, used it, right? So I was, you know, I couldn't afford big, fancy farm equipment, and I liked my horses, so I didn't have a tractor or nothing, but I was buying old farm equipment. I wanted to start off with one of those single plow deals, and I found out what, a, you know, how difficult that was. And then I got into, a, um, it's called a sulky plow, where I sat on the plow, and I did the plow with the team. It was awesome. Okay, but that's how I kind of attacked it as I went back to the older stuff. And, you know, like the old Ford tractors, you know, I kind of had my eye on those. I never really got one, but I had my own. But also what comes with that stuff is a little more maintenance, a little more love and touching, a little more care. So, you, you know, all that stuff matters. But we, you have to just do what you can where you are. All the while keeping an eye on where you want to go. And that's what we've done faithfully. Walked in faith, 100%. Okay, so sugar and borax powder. So borax for fire ants. Sounds like it. Pour a boiling water on the fire ants. That's a great one. Cayenne pepper. Cinnamon helps with fire ants. So we have lots of things. But you'll just burn them out if you have some boiling water because that's not going to... I would just put that on them. No, we don't have a how to make beeswax candles, but there's a bazillion videos if you want to go watch them. But we do sell them at the off grid. No, well, not now. We don't really have. We have either. some in stock. Let's see what we got in stock. <laughs> you guys, be very I, careful. Please be patient with us. We talked about these emergency candles the other night with you guys. 
and it got kind of crazy. So we're making them so fast. We're doing two batches a day, morning and night. We make them, we hand pour them for you. Okay, so I mean, it's no, we're not mass Chinese factories over here. <laughs> so everyone, let's give a round job. of applause for yes. Tia, Jesse, and Ziva. And our, our family for makes all these, the, yes. For all the hard work that you're doing. Allison, on India. yes. Our and Miss Allison. Yes, yes, we are busting up. And we do actually have some three inches, some four inches in stock, some five inches. So they're, they're getting everything caught up except for the emergency candles, which were only, we're, they'll have it caught up probably by tomorrow or the next day. Okay, so oh, that'll know. be awesome. Yeah, because they only got that much to go. I know, they've been, but it, they've been rocking it. I know, but it'll take a couple It takes minutes. a second, yeah. yeah. But they are doing a really good job. But thanks, guys, for all your help and everything. We, I mean, we're really starting to form a really nice team. So you guys, you're responsible for that, too. You know that? So Emma's talking about her rebounder. That You guys buying uh, our stuff. You're helping families yep. live the life they want to live. It's just really good stuff, man. I would have ever thought it was possible. All right, so if you guys want to get your candles, they're really good. 100% beeswax. Uh, no soy added. We use 100%. We make these Un ourselves, y'all. Unrefined. Unrefined. Unrefined beeswax, right? And the wicks are 100% cotton, okay? So everything's kosher. Really nice, nice. We hand pour them for you. We have them in several different sizes. I'll leave the link for you guys. You but there's only a few left. Yeah, I mean, we have whatever we have is what we have. And if you get some and maybe we oversell by a few, we, we will get them right out to you. You know what I mean? They purify the air that you breathe. Trust me. If you guys have any kind of stinky going on, you light that thing up and within an hour, <laughs> it's gone. I'm, am I lying? No. I'm not lying. And it actually makes the air better. We have people letting us know that they have cat dander problems and they light the candle up a couple hours before bed so it kind of juices up the place and they have been sleeping better what about the insomnia no not insomnia what was the asthma word asthma. asthma the person had asthma and is sleeping better so these are just the people that are emailing us we're not making any medical claims but look up the benefits of a hundred percent unrefined beeswax candles and then run and get yours from doug and stacy yeah Mama Werewolf rides a unicycle for exercise. That's cool. I would like to see that. Yeah. Send me a picture. <laughs> Send me a Google video on your phone. I love it. Blood, sweat, tears, baby. Yeah, it's great for the bathroom. You ain't kidding. Yeah, Urban Better Chaos and found a rebounder at Salvation Army for 20 bucks. Yeah, you guys look for the secondhand stuff. I always went secondhand. I was buying old farm tools, and I always thought to myself, too, like, what if the grid goes down and you can't get batteries for your Milwaukee anymore? So everything I have has hand tool backups. You guys got to think about that stuff. Yeah, you go. all these ants with wings going on. Oh, that's, you know why that's me. I cleaned out my, I... So if you guys are loving hummingbirds, I love hummingbirds. I always try to put my hummingbird feeders out a little early to get the scouts that come. So I put mine out last week and then it's been getting really hot. So I know they're going to be coming now. So I put some out today and they had a few ants on them. So that's why you Thanks ants. a lot. <laughs> There's ants crawling around my sink. And then what happened was 15 years later when we can do what we want to do pretty much because we live like nobody else, like Dave Ramsey says, we have zero bills, y'all. We don't have a mailbox up in our front of our property. Let's get real here for a second. We have zero electricity bill, zero water bill, zero trash bill, almost no food bill. We don't have any insurance, right? Like all this money that we were wasting in our previous life down in the city has been slim slashed and smashed. So now we have income and, and we can do what we want with it, right? So we're, we fortify our homestead. We, you know, live like nobody else so we can live like nobody else, right? And that's, that's what it's about, man. It's a lot more control in your hands when you don't have to think about where all this stuff's going to be coming from or if the grid goes down, what's going to happen or anything else. And then let's let's listen how awesome Sissy is. She's 70 years young, gardening, cooking, water aerobics, fermenting, grounding, and the beat goes on, she says. So if you guys want to get rid of your trash, if you live off grid, yeah. don't. I wouldn't even suggest burning it. Take it into town where you spend money. We spend money at gas stations. We spend money at little stores. We go to Walmart very rarely and occasionally, but they have trash cans all up in their parking lots. So I don't have any problem at all 
utilizing that space when I'm patronizing one of those places. Never have I had a problem with it. So that's just one little trick you guys learn just for hanging out. Oh, Sandy wants to know, how are the baby lambs? Awesome. Oh, we have a couple announcements. We have. We too. just had a baby lamb. Right after. Okay, on so the eclipse. Right after the eclipse did its thing, then she went into labor, and we had a baby. And guess what its name is? It's Eclipse. Yeah. And it's a wait. It's a boy. It's a boy. It's not a girl. Yeah. So we we do. So that was exciting. And the triplets that I have are monstrous and huge, and they are knocking me over and jumping me jumping on me like dogs, and I don't like it. Uh, they just have a little bit longer. That they're going to go almost to the end of the month, and then they'll be weaned. So right now, they're little stinkers. Yes, we do pay our personal property tax because we live in Missouri. Some states don't even have it, so if you live there, you'd be able to escape out of that too. My finger's doing good. I just kind of slacked off on putting the uh, uh, castor oil on there. I have to be very disciplined with that stuff. Um Oh, Miriam says, uh, dry skin brushing can also clean the limb system. So here's another one. So let's say you are in a wheelchair um, or you're not able to get up on a rebounder and you want something to help the lymphatic system because that's what's going to help detoxify the body, to get the limb system moving, to get rid of the toxins from the body. I, dry skin brushing is amazing. Doug yeah. and I have done a video on dry skin brushing many, many years ago. We've talked about it. Actually, I did dry screen brushing on one of the live shows before. But those wooden brushes with the kind of natural bristles, and you're going to start at the feet, and you're going to go all the way up. There's lots of videos that you can find on YouTube, or you can find ours. What do we call it? Dry skin brushing? Yeah. And so um, it's an and, it, and it explains how to do it. But it's wonderful because it also helps with the skin, getting the, the dead skin cells off. Um, and then, you know, you can dry skin brush, like right before you get in the shower, and then you can go take a shower, and it's wonderful for the health of your skin, if you have cellulite, um, and just to help with the lymphatic system. So all these things are marvelous tools to add to your arsenal. I still dry skin brush. Um, I rebound, you know, sometimes if I don't rebound, maybe I'll dry skin brush. Sometimes I'll do them both in the same day. So it just depends. So all these things are just great little things and tools to have to help with your health. And one thing that's wonderful about the dry skin brushing is it's a little more inexpensive compared to the rebounder. So if that's something that you're looking into, it's a great way to start your day. Or, um, But I would not recommend doing the dry skin brushing at night because it will kind of get you going. So you don't you want to be relaxed at night. So I would do it, you know, in the morning or early afternoon and then don't do it at night. The whole system has been built up. The whole matrix has been built up to make you pay. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Like, think back. Like, I was watching this video today of this gal. She rides her motorcycle all around the world. And she's rolling up on this little tribe in the middle of this wetlands, right? They're not tripping on nothing. They don't care if Iran is bombing Israel. <laughs> they are making food, and they are living off the land. And, you know, that stuff could affect them. That's why I'm trying to keep my eye on it, okay? Especially here, because you're heavy. You guys are heavily... Uh, dependent on the system so that's why you need to know this information because it is going to affect your supply chain uh factola you know killing 3.3 million birds at the largest egg producer in north america last week or whatever is going to affect the price of eggs and the availability i mean these are just the way it is so that's why i try to keep you ahead of that but out there they could care less and they were growing their food doing their thing and, uh, you know, it's a good way to be. <laughs> but you also kind of kind of keep your mind on it. So, Carrie says, how long do you rebound for each day? Carrie, that's the good thing about rebounding. If you just do, like, two minutes, that's, you don't have to do it for a long time. So, if you're bouncing, and the one thing to remember, if you do have a rebounder, don't bounce up like you used to jump with a trampoline. You want to push down into the ground. So, you're pushing down, down, down. Don't go flying up in the air. It's more controlled pushing down. So, um, and then you can find videos on rebounding uh, also. If you don't like some of them that you find, find another one. There's tons of them out there. Some of them are going to be boring as heck, I'm just telling you. Some of them have music to them. Or, you know, maybe watch some videos, get some ideas, moves that you like, and then just watch a show and just do those. But, you know, if only you have a minute or two, do it. And that's it. That's going to be so much better. Two minutes of rebounding is incredibly powerful for the body. Incredibly. 
What's two minutes of your life? Seriously, for your health. You can do two minutes three times a day and get huge benefits from that. So I'm really, I really do like the rebounder. And the cool thing is he doesn't like, you know, he never really liked to exercise. Um, that's one thing he'll do. Because he'll just, it's leaned against the wall. He'll just put it down and he'll be doing something. He'll bounce on it a little bit and then he'll get off. So I think it's a, you know, it's great. All right, so here's a recap. Amos Miller has won his right. The state has lost their battle against Amos Miller. He can sell raw milk over state lines. That's pretty good stuff. Somebody just asked something else, too, and I was going to answer it, and I forgot what it was. Oh, Dr. Leo is going to be here tomorrow on the homestead at 2 o'clock. We will be opening up the bees, a uh, couple videos, probably on Wednesday. What's tomorrow? Monday. So Tuesday, I'll have that video for you guys of us opening up the bees, seeing what's going on, and setting a swarm trap. So if you want to learn how to do some natural beekeeping and catch up with Dr. Leo, uh, that's our guest that will be here tomorrow at 2 o'clock, uh, in case you're wondering. And then he's also going to be speaking at the Homesteading Life Conference. This is the only gig he's doing all year. So if you want to see him in person, ask questions. You can buy swarm traps, bee traps, uh, uh, beehives, uh, books, any kind of information from him. He always brings that stuff. You can get that live from him there. And he's going to have a bunch of information for you guys. Okay, so that's going on as well. Buckle up. You know, Iran's firing missiles at Israel. All this stuff is just, you know, if you're not paying attention, they always use the wars for the resets. Okay, you can go look it up. It's just how it is. So just be careful. Just keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, Anita, I see that you bought your rented from Living Traditions of Homestead, and you're very proud of that. Yes. I didn't know that they were selling it. If you guys want to get it from Living Traditions, well, yeah, yeah. that would be a good and source. And I don't know what it, what, what's in it. I don't know anything about it. Are they it. making their rent it? I don't have any idea, yeah. but you could go look it out if you guys like those folks. They're good folks yeah, down there in Southern awesome. Missouri. Friends of ours, actually, OG Homestead homies. And, of course, we do Passover because even in the scripture, uh, Jesus said, do this and honor me. And what was he doing? He was sitting at the Passover. <laughs> All right. Dr. Leo, that bee box, and now I want one so much. You guys can even build your own. He gives you the plans for free on his website, horizontalhive.com. It's awesome stuff. It's just a good fellow. We hang out with really cool people. If you don't see people that you like hanging around us, there's probably a reason for it. <laughs> you should think about it. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yes, Jim, our root uh, cellar is doing great. Yeah, yes, no floods, here. no yeah. problems. I got a little sub pump in there. Now the storage helps charge it too. We no problems. Matter of fact, we were so dry there for a while, there was no, not a drop of water even in the little sub pump pit, so... But I do put um, calcium chloride, or you can get those, like, they come in little containers or they're hanging bags. Those little dehumidifier things that you, you can buy for RVs, you know, you can get them at the stores. They have them at the dollar store. You can get them at, you know, any kind of, like, a Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or something like that. So you can put, I put that down in the food cellar. You can also buy calcium chloride in a big 50 pound bag at a lot of the feed stores and put it in like a potato sack and I hang it up and you can put it with a bucket underneath it if you have a big area and that will work and it'll pull all the moisture out of the area. So Carmen's doing chair exercises and biking row machine at the gym. I have to do that for my new hips. That's right, you do. Got to keep active. And that's the thing is movement is amazing for the body because your body is meant to use it or lose it. So here's the thing. I, I know a lot of people, they say they're allergic to exercise. So <laughs> the thing is, is you got to find something that you enjoy. <laughs> well, like you, that's like him. Mm -mm. So, you know, if you do something that you enjoy doing, like if you like biking, you know, you could get an electric bike even because you do have to pedal on it. And if you're getting out of nature and the sunshine, get an electric bike. Getting outside, doing these things, you know, you don't have to go run, you don't have to go do sit-ups, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, just something that you enjoy to do, you know, getting up. If you like to dance, 
get a mirror and turn it on and dance. You could watch yourself or just turn the music on and dance. No one's watching. Um, you know, and just have fun. If you have a rebounder or if you do like to go to the gym, you can go to the gym. But just getting out. I, I like to work out these or do things out in nature. If there's something that you like, there's millions of fitness people on YouTube. You can find them on our Instagram. The cool thing about Instagram, I will say, is they do have a lot of... Um, you know, stretching, breathing, Tai Chi, regular exercise. I mean, anything you would want, you can find. So if there's someone that's your cup of tea, you know, if you want an older instructor, if you want um, a younger instructor, if you want, you know, whatever you want, you can find it. And then that way, find something that you like. You know, sometimes, you know, if you're looking for someone, maybe you don't like the music they use, or maybe you want this, or maybe you just want to work on stretching, because flexibility is so, so important, especially as we age. Working on your breathing is totally important. Doing breathing exercises, you know, and it is exercise. So most of us, as we age, you, you, you start to be shallow breathers, so you are only working these muscles. So this is not able to expand. So you see a lot of people when they check their oxygen levels and they're, they need oxygen because over time, they're just shallow breathers. So these muscles are not, and they may not have any type of issue going on. It just, they need, they need to work these muscles. And by breathing, because this is a pump, and if you're sitting, this diaphragm right here, that's what helps to move. That's what's getting the organs moving. That's getting the lungs filled up. If you're sitting, this thing can't expand. So if you're squatting or standing, your diaphragm's able to move. So it's really important if you work on breathing exercise. You can breathe in and out of your mouth, in and out of your nose, in your nose, out of your no mouth, just lots of different ways. You can find a YouTube video on breathing exercises. If that's the only thing you can do, that's going to be amazing for you because you want that oxygen getting into the body, into all your cells. So that's something really simple to do. But just find something you love and then do it outside in your bare feet. If you want to sit in a chair or stand and ground yourself because you want to get rid of some of these EMFs, you know, and by taking our shoes off and our socks off, standing in the dirt or in the grass is just amazing. Sit against a tree. This weekend we were sitting against these 100-year-old beautiful trees. Oh, we were that hugging them, bark. sitting underneath them. Stacy got bird pooped on underneath it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was standing there. Yeah, and it pooped right on my watch. So that's uh, but I mean, I'm just saying these trees are powerful. I mean, just think about their wisdom and think about all that they can tell us, you know, over the years that they've been around. Because I think it's just fascinating. So. Kathy, there's not a lot of trolls on here. There's always going to be a couple, but not a lot. Everyone's just chilling. Turn your TV off. You'll find things to do to go move around. All right, man, that's it for me. That's all I can tell you guys. We got the updates on Amos Miller. We talked about Braggs being a scam. Kate Perry bought it with her friends. They watered it down first. Now they hooked up with the appeal apples. You know, that's the word on the street. I mean, we don't really buy the stuff. We try to make our own. But if you want to look to an alternative brand, one thing we can tell you is you want to get it where it's very cloudy. You don't get clear apple cider Well, if vinegar. it says raw, it'll be. You want to have a mother in there. And you want it to be very cloudy looking. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. Oh, Idaho Hoosier says, I have a cell, Cellar Sizer Rebounder for 30 years. Works great. Actually, the Cellar Sizer Rebounder is one of, it's up in the top rebounder. So that's a really good one if anybody is interested in that one. Do you one. think someone could have bentonite clay have mold on it? I don't think so. Well, I mean, if maybe it, it, it was... It looks like mold spots. Probably not. Probably well, I don't... I mean, if it if, if it was in a maybe hot, stuffy place, I don't know how you're having it. Yeah. Usually... It's you can send us a good. picture. You know, email us a picture. Put in there, moldy bentonite clay on the subject line. We'll take a look and at I'll it. And I'll look at it. And if you guys uh, signed up Wednesday night at the university for the Palm Spray giveaway, we do cool stuff at the university. Um, I'll be getting those out for you guys this week. For the five winners. Can you dig it? And I'm dropping Dr. Leo's website in the comment section right now. Horizontal Hive. No S. That's a scam site. Horizontalhive.com. Okay, so everyone keeps asking about the guineas. So it's dark here, and the guineas should be inside. However, what you're hearing, but they've shut up since then, is I have, right now, it's kind of mating season, so they're 
the the guys are running around with the girls and they're finding great places to lay their eggs. <clears throat> so they're kind of a lot of out of, they're discombobulated, I guess you could say. And I have a couple of them that are roosting on top of the coop. So that's why you're hearing them and they're making a lot of noise because they're probably wondering where the rest of them in. Because the rest of them are being smarter and going in. So I don't know if they ended up going in because they're quiet now. But they're just doing that now. And they'll do it for a little bit and they'll end up all going in after, you know, they decide to sit on their nests. All right. Let's wrap up for us. If you guys just showed up, you're going to have to go back and watch the replay. So you can get the information that we shared with you tonight. I will also leave the link for you guys to our website, which on our website will have all the information that we talked about here. It has the link for the university. It has the link for the conference at the events tab. It has the link for the shop tab where you can get any of the stuff that we talked about or if you want to up your preps a little bit by getting some salt or bentonite clay or things that might get you into a pickle if the supply chain gets disrupted a little bit, because that would never happen, right? <coughs> so, that's all I'm thinking. And then Natalie wants to know recipe for hummingbird feed. It's just one part sugar, and you want to use white refined sugar um, to four parts water. So it's one to four. And yes, you should give the thumbs up a replay too, because that's what helps keep that analytic thing jamming. So it sends it out to even more people that might just stumble across our channel for the first time. Maybe they want to see a win in the court system for homesteaders and off-grid folks, because that was pretty good, being able to sell his raw milk across land. I'm glad he kissed the ring. And is able this is all so stupid, right? Like, it's just milk from a tit off a cow that's actually alive and is actually beneficial versus the stuff that they sell every single day at the store that they transport everywhere that's deader than a doornail and causes more sickness and inflammation probably, in one man's opinion, than any other thing in your diet that most people consume the most of is that milk. And half and half. And Get the all sweet these potatoes real quick. Oh my gosh, I said we were going to say I know, goodbye. well I just saw one because, um, where is it? Duncan. Are you still here, Duncan? Chunk and Duncan. What to do with the potatoes in the water after the root grows long? Oh man, we already talked about that. I showed it last week. You missed last week. Ugh. So these were on top of the sweet potato. When they get to be about, you know, this six inches or so, I pulled it out and then I like I just did this one so there's no roots on it. Can you see that? But do you see my other ones are getting roots? See the roots? See how long they got? And then so that's your plan. I'm going to put that in the ground, and that's what I plant. And then you water it. Water for quite a few days every day. Make sure you water it, and then that way it will be ready. Um, and you won't need to water as often once it gets going. The hummingbirds cannot process the brown sugar and stuff. they got to have the... Yeah, the, what it is is, at first, years and years ago, I was like, I'm going to have healthy hummingbirds. So I'm going to use, like, the sucanid, or I'm going to use, you know, raw sugar. The problem is, is they got a very high metabolism, so you, you need to give them that's very refined because it's not good for their bodies. And I mean, they could end up getting sick and all that. So they do recommend you using white sugar. You guys. You can do white organic sugar, but just make sure it's, you know, the white kind of really nice ground up white sugar. Before we get out of here this evening, I'm going to drop a heavy one on you right quick. You ready? Be careful falling for this Israel scam stuff, right? They're, 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 I've been warning you guys about this, but they're going to set this stuff up, but they're trying to draw you in, right? And they're trying to just use this blanket, you got to love Israel coverage. I'm trying to warn you guys against this stuff. So be very careful about this. You know what I mean? They're trying to, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a play. Okay, I'm just telling you, it's a play. Just be careful, right? Oh, no, we don't want to build in Iowa. We have friends move from Iowa. They move here. This is the state to be. We are the number one homesteading oh, yeah, they state, say, number well, one off-grid off state. Well, we're not. They say the three states for off-grid living is Tennessee, Missouri, and Texas. And we've set up, uh, I think it's one of the fastest 10-acre uh, or less homestead building size state that's been like a couple years We're talking ago about for front farms small farms smart starting starting small farms right so we do have a good voice our we are we are a conservative type of state um 
you know, we do uh, did the gold and silver as a, a currency for us. You know, like, there's a lot of good stuff going on, but it has some drawbacks, too. Like, you know, and, uh, but everything is basically, what it all boils down to is how much you interact with it. The less you have your hands in there and your voice and your opinions, the more they're going to walk on you. And then here we are in this position where they've gotten away with it for so long. And now we're all trying to raise the alarm bells and we're at this friction point. <laughs> Because it's hard to take a big fat old tick off of something, you know? Unless Always it's your smokes. dog. <laughs> well, you might lose the head in there. Yeah, that's true. All right, y'all. So you'll have a good night. Share the video with your friends. We have some good information in here. And we'll see you guys on the next video or Wednesday night at the university. Yay! Okay, and I'm going to try to put some bangers out for you guys this week. Uh, show you guys what's going on around here because we have a lot of stuff going on with the garden. We've been working hard in there. Uh, that's another reason why we haven't done a lot of videos this last week. Uh, we had the baby. We had some stuff with moms. Went to Germany and came back real quick. So, <laughs> so we just have been doing some stuff around here. And uh, I just need some clarity too. I've been working on some clarity. Okay. All right, so we'll see you guys on the next video. Smash that thumbs up. Share with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed, and... We will see you, like, next Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday we'll see Sunday. you uh, probably tomorrow on a video or Tuesday at the latest because Dr. Leo will be here. All right? Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Or hopefully we'll see you guys at the uh, Homesteading Live Conference. Yay, my...